Hello, welcome to my interview program. I invited Mr. Murali Kumar today. He was a place manager of Oakland Council. Hello, Murali. Hello, Tony. Nice to be here with MCTV7, so thank you very much for having me. And you are a founder of Communities Action Trust. Yes, mm. so it's CATANS for for the purpose of acronym, yes, mm. Communities Action Trust New Zealand. I set up about 10, 12 years ago, mm. particularly to provide a platform to do events. Mm. And uh, it was set up in Wellington. Oh, yeah. And through the trust, we do the Wellington Diwali Festival. Mm. We also do the biannual Southeast Asia night market that's bringing the Southeast Asian communities like the Filipino communities, Vietnamese, Cambodian, mm. Singaporean, Malaysian mm. communities to do a big event. Mm. So the sole purpose is to provide a platform for community interaction and community engagement. Mm. Diwali Festival is uh, famous even in Auckland. Yes, it all started from here in Wellington, so it's a very popular festival, very famous for sure. Yeah, for Indian community. Yes, yes. People may think yeah. you are from India. Yes. Well, my heritage is India. <laughs> uh, yes. yes, my lineage is India. Mm. But I'm born and raised in Singapore. Oh. Yeah, so I'm a Singaporean by birth and um, I was a school teacher. I started mm. off my career in Singapore as a school teacher teaching yes. languages. And then the change brought me to Australia, did some studies. Mm. And then I came to New Zealand, I did some studies and I've been living here mm. for many years now. Mm. What made you come to New Zealand? Right. So that's interesting because um, when I was studying in Australia, I mm. felt that I loved the lifestyle. You yeah. know? And um, I wanted to stay on in Australia. And But due to various circumstances, and then I was having a chat with my lecturer mm. who actually is from New Zealand. Oh. And she, she said, Murali, I think you should go to New Zealand. Mm. It's a young country and it's growing and I think you will enjoy it. Mm. So I hopped on a flight and I landed in Auckland. Mm. And um, one thing led to another and after 20 years I'm still in New Zealand. Mm. I haven't looked back. Mm. One of my uh, friends, Next door, yeah. told me he was from England, right? And he told me that ah, he lived everywhere in the world, world. but New Zealand yeah. is the best. He yes. told me that's right. So I think I think he's quite correct. It's a beautiful <laughs> place, you know. Yeah. And I think um, there is there is a certain and of course we've got the best air. You know, it's a you know, it, it's quite beautiful. Mm. You know, the weather is quite good, mm. and you know, I think I think you've got a pleasant lifestyle. Lifestyle is good. In New Zealand. Mm. What did you study in your school? Yeah, days? so I specialized in communications. Mm. So when I you know, finished my language study and all that in Singapore, mm. I went to do my communications and um, and I came here and I completed my postgrad qualifications in international communications. Mm. So that's the focus. And, um, and since then, I think I've been very heavily um, actively involved in government work. Mm. And uh, you worked for the Wellington City Council before? Yes, yes, I have worked. So my first career, my first job mm. uh, in the government sector mm. was with the Wellington Council with local local authority. Mm. Yes, mm. so that was way back in 2000s. Mm. Yeah. yeah, you were here in New Zealand for... Uh, 21 tw years now. 21 years. Yes, it's mm. a long time, mm. more, than, more than two decades now. <laughs> okay. And uh, how long have you been in Auckland? Right. I've spent a total of seven years in Auckland. Mm. So I spent about 14 years in Wellington. Mm. But I have always kept a very strong uh, focus in Auckland because I've got family here. My mother lives in Auckland. Mm. So, so I often used to come back. And, and because of the diversity of the work that I was involved in, mm. I was often coming to Auckland. Mm. And then for the last five, six years, I've made a move to live in Auckland. Mm. Yes. Western Auckland? Yes, absolutely. West Auckland. Okay. Yes. That's why you are a candidate of uh, uh, Western Auckland. Yes. Henderson? Henderson Massey. Massey. Yes, that's okay. right. That's mm. right. Mm. 
And uh, you did a relationship manager yes. with the Ministry of Social sure. Development in Wellington as yes, well. Yes, as well. Oh. So after the council stint, I had a, I had about three, four good years working for uh, Wellington Council. Mm. I also worked for an organization called the Families Commission, mm. where we were engaged with uh, communities. It was more like a, a, a crown entity. And after that, I went to Ministry of Social Development and I was actually working as a relationship manager. Mm. My key focus was actually community development work. Mm. And that's when I was engaging with not just the Indian communities, but across the board. So from the Chinese to the you know, Korean communities, uh, the Southeast Asian communities mm. and Indian communities, I was doing mm. a lot of community development work. Mm. Okay. Very important question. Yes. What made you be a candidate of Henderson Messi Local Board? That's right. Very good question. Yes. So given that I've been involved with community work for a long time, engaging with communities, both from a professional work perspective, mm. as well as outside of my work mm. where I've organized events and festivals, we, I kind of felt that there, was this, there is this time now that we must stand up for office, public mm. office, mm. and provide that representation and that voice for our community. So at the operational level, you know, we've been involved in doing all this for a long time. But now at the management level, at the advisory governance level, basically the governance level, mm. the time has now come for some active good representation. And I have, you know, I feel that this is a good time for us to step into that kind of space. Mm. And this is also an opportunity to show our other wider ethnic communities that we should encourage you to stand up for office. Mm. We are about 20% of the population, the ethnic, you know, ethnic 20? communities, 20% oh, in okay. Henderson Massey especially. Mm. We are more than 20% ethnic communities. So I think it's a good opportunity to demonstrate that through public office. Mm. As long as I know, Auckland City is the uh, very multicultural city in the world. Yes, it is. Fourth, a, number fourth? I think so, yes. Mm. Yeah. So we are quite multicultural and we are actively multicultural. Yeah. So we need uh, multicultural local board members. Absolutely. So we need representation, you know, to, mm. to, to, to reflect, I suppose, the population. Auckland mm. being diverse, multicultural, multi-ethnic, we need to demonstrate that at all levels of, of uh, our society. So mm. not, you know, I would think that even at the parliamentary level, mm. you know, we have, we have a few ethnic MPs, but I think even at that level, we can afford to have more ethnic uh, parliamentarians. Mm. So let us start, you know, mm. encouraging mm. our community. Mm. Many local people recognize you, especially in Henderson or Messi. Yes, yes, they've started to recognize me. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> it, it's good, I mean, you know, because we are there to serve the people. The most important thing here is about service, mm. you know. So this is one thing about holding office and, you know, but I think it's about the spirit of giving back. Mm. My motto I must, must mention is about giving and growing, mm. so. And you have to promote yourself. Yes, we have to put ourselves out there first yeah. and say, hey, look, I'm standing here, but I'm standing for the community, mm. you know, and I'm here to provide that service. Mm. I'm here to provide that advocacy, for that representation. Mm. When you be a local board member, yeah. you have any special plan or special policy for the local people? Yes, I'm interested in focusing at that local level on a couple of things. So. Mm. One of them is I want to I want to be there to promote more local jobs. Now mm. Henderson Massey is a is, is a big catchment area, mm. and uh, we've got a number of service providers and number of businesses there as well. So I want to be able to provide some advocacy and to promote for local jobs. I'm interested in the environment, so you know there's there's a very strong focus on the environment and the health and well-being. So mm. we're looking at bike biking tracks and you know yeah. and that builds on to the transportation as well. Mm. So I want to help look into those sort of matters. And last but not least, I want to focus on diversity, you know, and we've been talking about diversity, multiculturalism, multi-ethnic mm. communities. Mm. I want to bring the fact that we need to promote connected communities. Mm. So while we have 
you know, Indian communities doing their events and their activities. We've got our Korean communities, we've got Chinese communities, but there must be a platform to connect them. Our yeah. Pacific community is quite large there too. You know, they're doing some great work there. So how about looking at building a strong bridge to connect people? Mm. And that's what, you know, mm. I've been also trying, trying to focus on. So and I use the word connected communities. Mm. That's, that's powerful. As you told, connected communities have power. Yes, absolutely. Otherwise, isolated communities, no good. No, so because, but it starts, you see, yeah. because that's where, you know, you've got communities here, you know, and mm. when you have a connection, the voice is louder, mm. the strength is yeah. stronger, you yeah, know, yeah. And, and as you quite correctly say, there's, there's more power in there, mm. yeah. And you can get uh, some uh, economical uh, yeah, benefit or something like Absolutely. that? Absolutely. I mean, what, what we want is, you know, we, we, we want to build people. So we want to empower. Mm. So when you, when you build a person, mm. then, you know, you support the families. When mm. you support the families, you support the communities. Mm. And when you have strong, connected, well, uh, healthy communities, the whole catchment area, it, it mm. transcends. It trans, how do I say? It builds up. Mm. So, so yes, it will start from an individual, but we work, you know, at different levels. Mm. Yeah. So that's why connected communities is a powerful uh, yeah. concept. Yeah. And I think o Auckland City mm. is uh, the biggest issue of Auckland City is transportation. Transport, yes, it, the congestion is there. Definitely, yeah. there's the traffic, and you know, sometimes you know, we look at how many. You know, if you look at a whole week when mm. you've been, you know, coming in and out of Auckland or when you've been taking your car, how long do you actually stand, you know, sitting at a traffic light? Yeah. Yeah, so, so we need to look at, 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 at the national level, the government level, you need to look at transportation. Mm. But also at the local level, you want to look at, you want to look at policies and you want to look at programs that would support people to have more sort of, options and varieties, you know. Mm. So that's why Henderson Massey is a good space, you know, for, for talking about that as well. They've got, I think there's a very strong focus on some Henderson plan which looks at, you know, developing the cycleways and encouraging people to actually not drive all the time but also have other options. Mm. And, and we've got also a growing community, you know, of senior people, you know. So we want to look at what else can we do to get them out of their house and go into the city and, you know, have a bit more of a walk around. So, you know, we need to look at it at different stages. Mm. We need to look at it at the local level, regional level, and of course, at the national level. I've seen the article that yeah. um, Auckland citizens, average Auckland citizens, stay in their car, car. Yeah. more than eight or 10 hours. <laughs> in, a, in a week, is uh, that yeah. what you're saying? Or in a, in a month or what's... What, yeah. I'm not very sure, yeah, but yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's right. So that's why it is, you see. So we, you know, and I know it myself because mm. I'm always running around and I said, oh my God, the amount of time that you spend in the car. Mm. So yes, yeah, so we need to look at, you know, developing our transportation. So I think they're talking about, you know, we are talking about the, uh, what do you call the, um, the train system, you know, upgrading mm. the train mm. system and what. So yes, the future looks good. Yeah. Yeah, and it's always about how can we do it better and how can we grow. Mm -hmm. So it, we are in growth mode. Yeah, yeah. Anything else promoting yourself? Yes, I would like to say that um, I'm, I'm very encouraged mm. and I feel that I need, you know, I'm supported and I'm encouraged to stand for this public office of being a candidate for the Henderson Massey Local Board and also for the Waitakere Licensing Trust, the Henderson Ward. Mm. I look forward to, you know, I look forward to being um, voted in on the board so that I can contribute my services and my knowledge and my experience to build our communities, mm. to serve our communities. So I would say, please vote for me. Mm. And I think uh, you have uh, plenty of experience already. Thank you. <laughs> for the local board. Thank you, yeah. thank you. Mm. Okay, I've talked to Mr. Murali Kumar, uh, who is a candidate for Henderson Messi Local Board. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me, and it's been a pleasure. Thank, Thank you. you. See you again. See you.